Voting is the cornerstone of the United States representative democracy, and each individual state has incredible power to determine how its residents participate in the voting process. In the first installment of Your Vote, Your Voice series, we examine the basic voting requirements in Mississippi. Secretary of State Michael Watson joins our Michael Guidry to examine the year-to-year elections in the Magnolia State and the procedure for registering for and casting your vote. Uh, Different states uh, run things differently. And so uh, they're the 50 laboratories of freedom for a reason. I think it's best that that the election systems are monitored by the states and overseen by the states. So I think that's an important point to to make. As far as Mississippi goes, um, I'll, I'll kind of run through very quickly uh, and since we just hit 2020, people, uh, that's still kind of fresh on their mind. So as you remember, last year was president and vice president, uh, senator, U.S. senator, uh, representatives, Supreme Court justice, uh, levy commissioners, and, and folks obviously don't, don't follow that race too much, but uh, that's out there, elections commissioners and school board members. So that was in 2020. This year, all we have are municipal offices. Uh, now, granted, there could be a special election depending on someone retired from a elected office, and there had to be a special to replace them. So uh, that could always happen in every year. Uh, but in this year, 2021, we just had municipal offices. Next year, 2022, again, you're on the federal cycle. So we'll have representatives on the ballot. We'll have Court of Appeals judge, Chantry Court judges. Uh, we'll have Circuit Court judges. We'll have levy commissioners again. Uh, and then we'll have county court judges and school board members who are on staggered terms. Uh, so that's kind of a brief overview of 2022. And then 2023 is really the big year. Uh, as Mississippians know, every four years we have statewide elected um, uh, offices are up. And so you'll see all eight statewide up. You'll see our district offices like the Transportation and Public Service Commissioners. You'll see uh, district attorneys are, are up. And then your county level offices as well. Uh, for instance, your sheriff, your chancery clerk, your circuit clerk, your tax assessor, tax collector, uh, your justice court judges, supervisors. Again, your county district offices are on as well. So that's kind of a quick breakdown of the four-year cycle in Mississippi. To put it in a nice kind of summary version that people can understand, it seems like even years, Mississippians are going to be looking at the federal level. And then odd years, it seems to be all focused on you know, more localized stuff, the statewide elections in the, uh, the odd year before the big general and those municipal elections in the odd years following the big general. That's right. And basically, to boil it down, you get the, the nail on the head there. Your even years, you're going to see the federal elections as well as judicial elections. And then on the odd years, you're going to see more localized races, your municipal and then your statewide elected uh, officials and, and others on the district and county levels. Uh, and Mississippi is odd in the sense that we're one of the very few that have off year uh, elections for statewide elected officials. Typically, you'll see most states do that in the presidential election year. Earlier, you know, you said that basically you have 50 states, 50 labs for what this process could look like. Um, And so it's going to be a little bit different in every state. In Mississippi, as it stands now, what is the process and the requirements for voter registration? Yeah, good question. And and one, again, that I hope Mississippians are aware of and and, and making sure they understand the process. So I appreciate this opportunity to explain it. But basically, every United States citizen uh, who possesses a certain number of qualifications is an eligible individual to register to vote in Mississippi. So in Mississippi, obviously you have to be a resident of our state uh, at least 30 days prior to the election, uh, at least 18 years old, or you will be 18 by the date of the next general election, not declared mentally incompetent by a court, and not convicted of a disenfranchising crime. So Section 241 of our Constitution, uh, who lists those as well as the, there's an attorney general opinion out there too. Uh, but those are those are the very slim down uh, qualifications one would need to be a registered voter in Mississippi. Uh, and as far as the process, you can register in person at your circuit clerk's office or at a municipal clerk's office, or, you know, if you go get your driver's license, motor voter, which was a federal uh, law passed, you can register to vote in any of those uh, public assistance areas like, like the DMV. And then lastly, uh, you can also mail in your registration. We have a form on our website, yallvote.ms, that you can download and fill out and send in to your clerk. So, those are the ways that you can register to vote. I think it's important to point out, you know, we see a lot of younger individuals really engaged in, in learning about the electoral process now. So for them, uh, obviously you have to be 18 by the time of the general election, but, you know, as, as long as you can be 18 by then, you can register and vote in the primary uh, as a 17-year-old, as long as you're going to turn 18 by that general election date. So 
very important to note that as well. And, and that's kind of the process, very easy process. Uh, if you're going to register to vote by mail, you download that application. Make sure you postmark it on or before 30 days uh, prior to the deadly election when you send that in. So those are kind of the highlights of how to register in Mississippi. And what are the general deadlines for registration? Depending on the election, obviously, it's, it's 30 days out from that election, so it moves. Uh, you know, if you look at our election calendar on our website, uh, and, and again, depending on which uh, election cycle you're in, you you need to know those different dates uh, to vote. So last year, uh, you know, we had a lot of questions about that, and we were trying to really inform our public of what, what are those dates. And I think that's an important one to go to our website, yallvote.ms. I can't plug that enough. Uh, it has all the election information on it. So anytime you have a question about an uh, upcoming election or uh, you know how to register to vote or uh, what are the excuses you can absentee vote, all of that is on our website, and we want Mississippians to be aware of those issues. And just in case people are, might be wondering, you can register and participate in, in a primary election, but participating in a primary election is not a qualifier for a general election. You can, you can miss a primary election, miss that registration, and still register and, and decide to vote in, in the general election if you so choose. You're absolutely right. And, and just so folks know, uh, not only if you miss that primary deadline, but the uh, primary runoff election, if there is one, would be on the 27th. So as long as you registered 30 days prior to the 27th, uh, you know, you, you'd still be a chance there. And then the general election uh, this year for our municipal elections is on June 8th. So 30 days prior to that, uh, you could come in and register to vote. So uh, again, make sure that you're aware of these deadlines and these dates. It's very important that your voices are heard. I want to talk a little bit about about moving real quick. You know, some people move and can cause a lot of confusion when either going to vote or or going to register. If someone moves within their county, uh, do they have to re-register in that county, or they just simply go to the clerk's office and submit a change of address? Well, so you can you can change your address actually online. We've made it very easy. Again, yallvote.ms. Uh, there's a, a tool on there where you can change your address, uh, and that would depend on uh, obviously the election in which you're voting. So. If you're voting in a municipal election and you move across the city, you know, in your different ward, uh, then, yeah, you, you're going to have to uh, be registered within 30 days of the election in that ward. Uh, so that's that's only kind of the, the difficult piece there. Now, if it was a county election and you were voting for a supervisor, that, too, you'd have to be in a specific ward. But if you just moved in the county and you were voting for, let's say, district attorney or uh, some other countywide office, then that wouldn't wouldn't matter. Now, it would impact where you voted, your precinct possibly, uh, but you would still be an eligible voter in that in that election. Uh, day of, what what do people need to know about you know showing up to the poll, whether it is a primary election, whether it is a um, a runoff, whether it's a general? What do people need to know about day of voting if they're choosing to vote in person in Mississippi? Yeah, good good question there, and, and again. My, my most important piece here is making sure that they uh, were aware of the candidates and the uh, elections that would be on the ballot. I think it's very important that we have individuals who research, who uh, you know do the hard work prior to going to the polls, making sure you understand who the candidates are, what they stand for, what their plans are, you know, and make sure they align with your values. And, and not only that, uh, voting for them, but then hold them accountable on the back end as well. I think that's a very important piece that sometimes we – we forget, uh, but make sure you, you have your ID when you go. If, if you forget your ID, you will be able to vote by affidavit ballot, and you can come back in and show your ID within five business days as well. So that's an important piece. Uh, obviously, you want to get to your precinct. Uh, make sure that you're there and you'll show your ID before you vote. You'll be given your ballot and uh, have an opportunity to cast your ballot. So pretty easy process here in Mississippi. Uh, we've got some phenomenal uh, you know, elections officials around our state be it your circuit clerks, your municipal clerks, or your elections commissioners, uh, and then obviously the parties run your primaries. So we got some great folks who are out there. Your poll managers are very patient. We had a wonderful turnout of poll workers uh, in 2020 uh, and expect the same here for this one in 2021. So uh, be patient with them. Uh, they will walk you through the process. But again, remember to take your ID. Remember to call your clerk and make sure you know which precinct you need to go to to vote. Uh, and then do your homework. Make sure you're aware of who's on the ballot, what they stand for, and that they align with your values and go cast your vote. Secretary of State Michael Watson with our Michael Guidry. Coming up in part two. So regardless of what we call it or, you know, however the, the changes are made with the law, the intent would be to have 
the same method of voting, you know, the same level of security on election day that you have on the days prior to election day, just to allow some flexibility for those who can't get there on election day. We look at the different efforts and perspectives shaping the debate over extended absentee voting.